Hey, welcome back to my channel where you reawaken your soul and follow your bliss. Let me ask you, have you ever wondered what it would feel like to totally be following your bliss, living your dreams, showing up in the world, giving 100% of everything that you have, loving what you do and doing what you love? Waking up every single morning excited and passionate about life, about what you're going to create, how you're going to step into creating the highest expression of yourself as the soul. Well, in this video, we're going to explore the soul and bliss. We're going to start off by the soul. I want you to know that the qualities of the soul, because I think it's really important to understand the qualities that our souls possess. The soul is all intuitive. It's endowed with pure joy and love and peace and calmness. It's the truest, highest expression of ourselves. It's the spark that comes straight off of cosmic consciousness or God or this divine source. This is our souls. And it's cosmic consciousness is filled in the soul. So when we start understanding that this dynamic power in this superhero is right here within our souls, and we learn how to start tapping into it through our hearts, knowing what's real, coming back to our real self as the soul. And it's really interesting because the soul is like a precious, beautiful diamond. And this diamond is always shining with the beautiful light of God, sparkling, everlasting, infinite light and joy and happiness of the soul. But what happens is, okay, we have the charcoal and we have the, the soul, the, the diamond soul reflects the light of God naturally. It takes that light and reflects it out into the world. The charcoal, on the other hand, is covered and it doesn't reflect the light. What it does is it absorbs the light. Well, that's the same with our souls. And this charcoal that we have, this charcoal is the layers covering the soul. What are these layers? They're layers of beliefs that we have about ourselves. They're patterns that we have. There's things that we're taught. So when we begin to like literally peel away these aspects of ourselves, so we got like fear and doubt, and go with me, think in your mind, what is covering up your true soul from shining? Maybe it is unworthiness or guilt. Maybe I said that. <laughs> or shame. So think to yourself, what are all these aspects that are keeping your soul covered up and dirty and mucky? So we have to like peel these layers off one by one. Get these beliefs away, these patterns, and peel it all away from our beautiful diamond souls that are always shining. So here at Reawakening the Soul, when we reawaken the soul, we're taking off all these layers of patterns and beliefs that are limiting us from our truest, highest potential as a soul. And we're polishing them up. We're taking all that dirt off, all these layers that no longer serve us. They're not doing any good. They're just keeping us small. So we're polishing it up so our souls can shine their natural diamond light like they're supposed to. So think about think about the presence of the soul that's right within you, that is you, that is behind. It's sleeping and we're here to reawaken the soul so we can shine our diamond light in the world and give all of ourselves without fear and become these infinite potential and infinite possibilities that are right here before our eyes. So that's a little bit about the soul. 
And I want you to know that on my website, I'll leave the links below. I have information regarding the soul in a video that you can get that tells all the detail about more dynamic powers that are latent right within our souls. So I'll send the link and below after you watch the video, go ahead, feel free to click on it and explore the soul more. So what is bliss when we say reawaken our souls and follow our bliss what is bliss have you thought about that what does bliss mean to you what does it mean to follow our bliss yogananda my guru describes bliss actually the closest term that comes to bliss is tranquility our souls have this natural tranquil state this knowing, all-knowing realization and truth of who we are. So when we're tapping into this soul, we are shining this blissful, natural nature. So why do we make it so hard to follow our souls and get all, get all these beliefs out of the way? It's just, it's been crazy because I've been really, really thinking about this lately. I was thinking like, wow why is it so hard to just be ourselves it should be the easiest thing right to just be ourselves and be natural about it why is it so hard when it should be the easiest thing it's because our mind limits us the mind or the ego sends all these beliefs into your mind of fear and shame and doubt and i'm not good enough and i can't do that and another big one is judging. Our minds are always worried about what other people are going to think of us. We're always feeling like we have to please everybody. Well, I'm here to say the more I've learned to be totally accountable and authentic to my truest, highest self by listening to the heart. The heart is endowed with pure feeling. So we use our hearts to come back in and say, what am I feeling? How does this feel to me? And we have to listen to our hearts because if we don't, as we know, if we're doing something and we're not listening sooner or later, we're gonna get kicked. <laughs> yes, we will. We're gonna get kicked because we need to move forward. And it only, and suffering only comes as a way to bring us closer to expanding our consciousness and becoming and stepping into who we need to become according to our evolutionary soul. So it's our soul's evolution that we have to go through in life and all of us have something different. But when we're following our hearts and we're learning to be quiet, to come into this, the wisdom of the soul, then we start tapping into that universal energy, that really dynamic power that's right latent within our souls. But we have the mind and the mind is about reason. So the mind, it's great when we use it correctly. When the mind is awesome and the ego is awesome if it is under the control of the soul. But it's just when we become a slave to the mind and a slave to the senses that we fall into trouble and inevitably suffering will arise. That's just the law. So that's a little bit about the soul and the bliss. Like when we start coming into our souls through meditation. Meditation is the way to tap in to that feeling of your soul. And I was thinking like, I want to make these videos where I can give you an exercise where you can actually get the experience for yourself. I know for me, I didn't want to be told what to think. I didn't want to be told what to do or what to believe. I wanted to know truth myself. And that's why I call myself a spiritual scientist because I want to use the science and I've used the science of yoga to experience this for myself. Einstein says the only source of knowledge is experience. Why is that? And it's so true because when we have the actual experience for ourselves, we just have this deep knowing, this deep understanding. 
experience brings us realization. So uh, right now, I want you just to take a deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and just release it. And just relax here. I want to bring in our energies where we can connect, where you can just feel this beautiful aspect of your soul. So whatever you're doing, just take a couple deep breaths in through the nose, close your eyes a minute and out through the mouth. And I want you just to feel this calmness, this state of being of the soul, this tranquility, this present moment. And know that this is you. This is the real you. Most of us have all these thoughts and negative beliefs going on, and we have such a restless mind. That restlessness keeps us bound to the world, to limitations, to not achieving what we came here to achieve. I was looking in for the new year, and actually my new year began in the winter solstice. And for me, it was making this conscious choice to commit to creating consistent communication and connection. And I was looking at a lot of C's, <laughs> and I was looking at the power that we have in a choice. So there's six C's I'm gonna go through, and the first one is a choice. Yes, you have a choice. If you make a conscious choice and a decision to become all that you can be by living in your highest truth, following your passions, doing what you love to do and what you're passionate about, make the choice to do something. And the second one is committing, committing, making the choice and having a commitment that no matter what it takes, you are going to now commit to this new project that you're working on or the book you're writing or whatever you're doing, the, the painting you're creating or gardening, it doesn't matter, but just commit to doing something that you love towards your dreams. And with the commitment, you commit to creating a new you, a higher you, creating yourself according to your soul, creating what you love, whatever it is to that, that brings you joy. That's what you're supposed to be doing. That's what all of us are supposed to be doing is creating what brings us joy. But so many of us are spending our life creating the same thing over and over, unhappy in our jobs, unhappy in our relationships, unhappy with our financial positions, unhappy because of our poor health, whatever it is. It's time to, for all of us to create something new. And the fourth one is consistent, being consistent. As I said in the first video about coming out of hiding, if we just do 1%, if we're just better 1% today than we were yesterday, we're moving forward. If we're 1%, just a little bit, better tomorrow we're moving forward you see we're either moving forward or backward so this is about being consistent every day and taking actions towards what you've committed to do and you're going to find by taking little bitty actions little bitty steps every single day what happens is step by step by step, it starts building momentum. And this momentum just keeps building up, 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 up until it's like this tidal wave and the tidal wave just blows right behind us where we start flowing. Yes, it blows and we flow, but we have to be consistent in taking those steps in order for this tidal wave to just come in, come in and help us and give us that extra universal spiritual energy to reawakening our soul and committing to ourselves and sharing our gifts to the world. And the fifth one we're going to get into is communication. It's communicating. It's communicating what you love. When I was going through and going through these seas, I was committed to giving this content and being consistent and communicating with you and connecting with you. 
because I had a big block regarding getting out and being on the camera and really being me. It took a long time and it's still a process of breaking through this. So it's communicating all of yourself and it's actually communication, communicating, speaking your truth, being authentic to yourself. And I know a big one all of us seem to have, or a lot of us, I should say, is saying no, saying no. People ask us, oh, you know, do you want to do this? And we really don't want to do it. And we don't really want to commit to it. But we say yes, because we feel guilty. We feel obligated. We feel sorry for them. We don't want to upset anybody else. So this is being open and communicating your true, authentic self. What you really feel. Go into your heart and find out what you feel before you give somebody an answer. And even if you do say yes and you change your mind, it's okay to change your mind. It's okay to say, no, I've changed my mind and I'm really not feeling like that would be the highest, best thing for me. And being okay letting go of how that other person's going to feel. We're not responsible for how other people feel. We're responsible for being real to ourselves and honoring how we feel coming into that truth. And what this communication brings us to the sixth one, connection. When we start communicating and being completely open in our communications, we start connecting to source, to God, to that cosmic energy that's right within our souls. We start connecting with other people who are like-minded, who have similar vibrations to us, where we can stay in the light together and support one another together. And that's why I made this commitment because it's really important to me to be a part of this spiritual family. And I'm just asking you and encouraging you to, to write down, go through all six of these and write down what kind of choice are you going to make? What are you willing to commit to? What are you ready to create and be consistent in it and communicating and connecting? It's worth it. You know, when I made this commitment and I started, I did the video and a few days later, I went to do another video after my hiding video coming out of hiding my camera or my video wasn't working on my phone. The sound wasn't working and I played with it and I just couldn't get it to work. It was like, wow, is this self-sabotage really this deep? I want to let you know this opened up such an awareness, which I knew about, but here I am living it because the minute I decided to commit and be consistent with this, something went wrong and I couldn't use my phone and I couldn't be in the woods. And I thought, you know, there's no obstacles there's only opportunities it's when we hit an obstacle like i hit this obstacle with my phone not working and i was like oh great so here i am committing to this and this happens but you know what i'm not going to let it poison my peace i'm going to move forward and i have other options i got a video recorder i got two computers so i'm just going to go ahead and use that and move forward because i am committing to do this so the minute you make a choice and the minute you make that commitment, I want you to know the universe is going to strike back. <laughs> it's the ego, the energy that right away says, oh, no, we're in battle. You can't move forward because you got to feel, you know, safe here. And this is the place to be and you can't do this. You're going to you're going to get hit. And this is where we have to really put on our spiritual muscles, learn spiritual armor because the battle has begun and that's the whole thing with the Bhagavad Gita it's the war and the battle between the soul and the ego you know the soul always wants you to come back to this divine state that you are and share all of you and do what you love but the ego wants to keep you safe and it's really an illusion. So it's breaking through this and it's moving forward. So when you make this commitment and you make this choice, if other circumstances come and these obstacles arise, you got to go back into your commitment and say, I will move forward no matter what. I will do this. I will. I can. 
So like I said, this is a dialogue and I'm so glad you're here. Put the comments below what your real, what kind of choices you're willing to make right now. What are you willing to create? Write down your six C's and what you're going to do today. Remember, it's not what you know. It's what you do with what you know. So start doing something today. Start taking action. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell, ding dong, because the bell will send you all the new notifications of my newest, latest videos where we can connect together. So thanks so much for being here. Keep shining your diamond light and make this your best day ever. Namaste.